<laughs> oh yeah, this guy's going places. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey baby, looking good here. Is this seat taken? You know what I mean? <laughs> Johnny, we don't have a moment to lose. We really must catch that train. Hang on, Professor. Johnny! Mr. Thunder, are you busy? Finally, a chance to get away from these depressing mountains. What is this? You pay for a first class ticket and there is never any seats free. I am sure one of these seats must be mine. <laughs> This is useless. I must find my own seat on this blasted train. To suit your passengers' needs, LEGO released a number of extra stations. These kits offered your passengers a clock, a route map, a ticket machine, and for the more environmentally conscious travellers, there was even a bin. However, if you just bought a standard LEGO train, your passengers would end up at a station like this. Grey, flat, with a few pointless lights and a ridiculous timetable that's had the same schedule since 1992. Useless. What we really need is something more modern. There we go. Perfect. This elegant plastic casing holds an LCD screen. If we open it up, you'll see the screen is a simple circuit board, and it's the type you'll find in any Arduino kit. Look carefully, and you'll see some electronic connectors at the top. That means it's finally time to use one of these bad boys, a big fat soldering iron. We need that to add some pins to the back of the screen. And you'll notice immediately that we also need a huge amount of wires to make this screen work. Half are power cables, half are data cables. And in its basic form, you're going to use six of your Arduino's digital pins to make this work. That's way too many. To bring that number down, we can build a shift register. Don't be scared. This is a really simple chip and you can get it in any electronic store very cheaply. All we do is solder it to a simple breadboard and add a few wires. And that way we can turn this crazy mess of 12 wires into just 5 to the Arduino and 2 of those are power wires. On this version I've also made detachable cables to make installation even easier. We also have one variable resistor on the back to control the screen contrast which is important, since every screen is different. You adjust this with a simple screwdriver, there's no coding required. But how do you mount this screen onto your station? Fortunately, these boards are a really convenient size. 10 LEGO studs wide and 3 bricks high, which means you can make a simple frame from whatever spare bricks you can find. With a few clips, the board slots right in. and a plate on top locks it all together or leaving enough space for your cables. Clip it to your station and you're good to go. Here's the code block where I need to give full credit to Rowan Sims for his 3-pin LCD library. If you're not familiar with libraries, they're little files that you add to your Arduino folder which give you an expanded set of instructions you can use for special things. For us, we're going to use Rowan's Liquid Crystal 595 library to control the screen. You can use the standard Arduino LCD library if you want, you just have to use more outputs on your Arduino to do so. So to start, we tell the program to include Rowan's library, and we declare which three pins will send data to the screen. If you've seen the earlier tutorials, the rest of the code will look very familiar. If you haven't, this is where we declare the train motor control pins, the light sensor pins and variables, our counter and our pause interval. 
All of this is identical to the motorized points tutorial, so check that video for more information. In the setup, next to the train motor stuff, we've got our first LCD instructions. We start by saying begin, and we tell the Arduino that our screen has two rows of 16 characters each, and we clear the screen to start with a blank page. The set cursor command tells the LCD where to start typing. Now with the Arduino, you start counting from zero, not one. So three zero really means the fourth character on the first row, because we count zero, one, two, three. At this point, we want to write welcome to, and we make that happen with the print command. Simple. Down in the loop, we're going to call up two functions. The first, station sensor, we've taken from previous tutorials, so I won't explain it here. It's the second function, station name, that we're interested in. In this code, we check a light sensor, and whenever the light sensor detects a train arriving at the sensor, it starts counting. If you run through this long list of if statements, you can see that for each number in the counter, we tell the LCD to go to line one, character two, which means second line, third character, and print the name of a town depending on what number the counter is at. We've got four names, so when the counter reaches five, we tell the Arduino to reset the counter back to one. If we wanted to add another name, we'd just copy an if statement, increase the counter by one, change the name, and then increase the final number by one to match. If you pay really close attention, you can see that not every name starts at the same character on the screen, and a few of these names have spaces at the beginning or the end of the name. This is because the LCD doesn't clear the screen every time, so sometimes letters from the previous names are left on the screen. The last letter of Temple of Doom, for example, is still shown when we write Transylvania, because Temple of Doom has more letters. So print a space just to cover up the previous name. We could do this with the clear function that we used in the setup, but that adds lots of lines of extra codes to our program, which takes up space in the Arduino's memory. This space technique is a bit cheap and dirty, but it works. And here's the setup. I've just built a simple loop with the Arduino and motor controller in the middle and with two light sensors, one next to the station to stop the train and one on the opposite side of the track to switch the station name. If you're really economical, you can do all this with just the station sensor and add a second timer to change the station name, for example, five seconds after the train leaves. And there you have it a simple way to expand your railway into an almost infinite number of stations. Thanks for watching.